Hello, hello everyone. Turn my camera. Hello everyone. Oh, hi, Linda, my sister. I love you, sis. <laughs> hello. It's the first time I'm doing it where it's uh, widescreen, so it's weird. And when I was typing, I couldn't even see what I was typing on my phone. Hello, Linda. Thanks for coming in, hon. How are you doing today, Miss Busy B? Hello, my sister tribe. Hello, everyone coming in. <laughs> Fresh out of training from one thing to the next. Oh, thank you for being here then. Thank you for being here. You're sacrificing to be here. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you so much. Hello, sis. Um, WWL Ministry. Hello, sis. Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Yes. Hello, Kasika. Hey, sis. How you doing? You did awesome on your show. <laughs> Keep me in your prayers. <laughs> yes. God is good. God is good. Hello. Hello, guys. I'm just waiting for some more people to come in. I'm glad I'm getting good signal. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Ellis, and um, this is my first show uh, premiering on the Sister Tribe handle under World Changers Sister Tribe, where we are changing our world. One woman, one story, one woman, one village one nation and one continent at a time yes <laughs> yes god the god in me and um it's founded by our very own dr princess fumi hancock amazing woman of god she's also on periscope under the handle one at princess <clears throat> of suburbia that's the number one at princess of suburbia so if you could join her on periscope she give you pra practical um, practical principles and strategies based off of the Bible for home, for career, for your relationship, for your business. So she is just an awesome woman of God. She also speak, teach, and she writes. She's a life strategist, a prophetic life strategist, and she also, um, and she's also just um, a strong businesswoman. She gives really good uh, strategies for business. And if you want to birth your vision, if you're looking to really find out what you want to do in life, she's really anointed to help you drive that. So uh, she's the founder of World Changer Sister Tribe. So just please uh, check that out. You could join. They're putting the links on the screen. Just join at um, bit.ly dot join Sister Tribe now, and just check it out. See what we're about. Um, um, I could promise you guys, you will not be disappointed. Um, we have a foundation right now that we're supporting that is building a youth enrichment center. And that center is helping to school young children and also give their family a trade so that they could help themselves. So you could check that out also and donate to that at adasefoundation.org. Um, and, and the project is Adase Adomori um, Project. So it's really helping children in Nigeria. So... Um, and another thing is to help fund that project, we just dropped a download. The song is called Friend of an Angel. It's a very strong, powerful song, very uplifting, very inspirational. So it's, it, it costs uh, $4.99. They put the link on the screen. So all the money to that, to that uh, song download, we're trying to download at least $2,000. That's our goal. And all the proceeds go to... Um, the Adase Adomori Project, which is uh, building an enrichment center to help these young kids, to help these babies she has in Africa. So th those are just some of the things we're doing. We're doing a lot in that foundation. God is really using that organization. So guys, I just want to uh, introduce myself for people that don't know me. I'm a, a world changer, sister tribe, volunteer leader. This is my first show. It's called Fearless You. Yes, <laughs> it's called Fearless You, and what I'm, my goal is and my assignment, I really believe it's more of an assignment, is really just to help people dig into who they really are, which is their fearless self. Because we weren't, um, 
we weren't created with fear. Fear is something that we adapted. And my, my assignment, my goal on here is to help people to become bold, to become fearless, to be bodacious. As Princess talked about, you can't really be bodacious and audacious in the spirit of fear. And, and even more importantly, you really can't be led by the spirit of God like you should because fear put a really strong pull on you. So whether you're aware of it or not, if you're operating in any spirit of fear, that is definitely um, a, a, a strong pull on you, fear. So you can't really operate in fear and faith at the same time. It's really one or the other. So guys, just to tell you a little bit about my story, how I really got so passionate about all this. Oh, hi, Christine. How are you doing? Just to tell you how I got really passionate about really uh, helping people to overcome fear or at least encourage you not to stay in fear. If nothing else, at least that. You know, you don't want to befriend your fear. You don't want to pet your fear. You don't want to uh, sleep with your fear. Fear is the enemy. So don't pet it. Don't treat it like it's a little pet. Don't accept it. You know, you got to get rid of that demon. It is a demon, people. It's a demon spirit which is really meant to control you and to steal your destiny and to steal what God wants to do. So don't pet that demon, guys. Don't pet it. It's, the, it's in the realm of darkness. We're not from darkness. We're from light. So, you know, we, we can't act like fear is okay. We can't take on the world's idea of fear, which is a lie from hell, like a little bit of fear don't hurt, or, you know, control your fear. No, don't control it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. You don't control it. You get rid of it. You know, so um, that's really what I'm here to really get strong about that. So uh, to tell you about my story a little bit is um, as a young child, I went through right before adolescence, maybe from age um, 10 to 11 to about 18 years old. I lived in a home where I really was really uh, dysfunctional. In the sense that I went through a lot of rejection and abandonment issues that was really, really um, difficult. And I went through a lot of verbal and, so, and emotional abuse, but mostly, um, and also some physical, but it was mostly emotional and verbal abuse. So I was really uh, abandoned. I was really rejected a lot. So um, through those years from about 11 or so, 10 and a half, 11 um, that's when I came to the States to 18 when I moved out, went to college and stuff. I really um, went through that dysfunction that really planted a lot of fear in me. It planted the seed of fear that led to me really trying to please everybody and uh, trying to receive approval from everybody. And also just trying to, um, just overly concerned with what people thought. Just really because I didn't have my own identity. I, I didn't, it started in the home and it kind of branched out to everybody else. So um, through those years, you know, God just, I d didn't really know. I adapted to that because it started when I was about 11 or so. So I didn't really know that became very a normal environment for me. I wasn't happy, but it became normal. And it's not until I really became saved that God showed me that it really started manifesting. Like I started feeling fear out of nowhere, just feeling it. And I really cried out to God to ask him what all this was. And that's when he started to unravel what was really going on. So yes, welcome first timers. Welcome everyone. Um, Hi, is that Aika? Like if that's you, hi, or Dr. K, I'm not sure which one. Once I thought it was Princess. So that's kind of like, and I went through that for a long time. So out of that experience um, of that manifestation of the fear and, and through various situations, I started questioning, what is this? Because I didn't even know what it was. I just started feeling very fearful for no reason. Um, I went into an internship when I was in college and I just started feeling fearful, and that's what really unraveled because I started asking God what's going on and crying out. Um, yeah, I guess you could call it that, but I don't even know if it was that. It was just, I don't know. It was abnormal. It was demonic, and it was especially when I start building relationship with people. 
then, you know, it just, it's like this thing came up to make me weird so that I wouldn't build new relationships. Now, at the time, I had friends. I had friends. I was going to school. I had a very good relationship. Uh, I was making the best money I could make at that time. And, uh, you know, things on the outside look good. But then, you know, the sphere thing just started. Yes, it was tormenting. Exactly, Christine. It was so tormenting. And I'm like, Oh my Lord. So it's this experience that really unraveled because it became so normal that I didn't know like the fear. I had the fear of people pleasing, overly concerned with what people think and needing people's approval. And that was based out of the fear. But I really didn't even know that my mind was so programmed about people. And I didn't even make decisions until I knew that everybody was okay with my decision or would be okay or I wouldn't be criticized. And um, I didn't even know I was doing that. I was so programmed. I was so programmed. But then after God started unfolding it, you know, I was just so programmed. Every decision I made was based off of what, how somebody would address it. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, hi, um, uh, Linda. Yeah, it was based off of how somebody would approve or not approve. But it was so automatic for me that I didn't go through the thinking of it. It's after, I like I said, the Lord started unveiling what was going on. So I was just running on a track automatically through that situation as a child that I went through that I didn't even know. Yeah, I wasn't even really being myself, but I didn't know up to then that was that was normal. I just didn't know the thought process that was going on that was controlling my behavior because it was so normal until God kind of tear the veil and exposed it. So, you know, so that that's really where I came from uh, out of that. I came from uh, just really controlled by people. That was my fear. Really control, really not make decision based off of people. So that's why today I'm like on the other side. When I see that in people, I really pray because, yeah, suppress issues. Yeah, because they were never dealt with. I just thought when I leave home, I'll be okay and everything will be okay, you know. And, you know, the, the uh, person involved with that situation when I was younger, you know, now, you know, we don't have any animosity. Like, I have a good relationship, so it's nothing now, but that's what I went through at the time. So I thank God for that, that he kind of restored that relationship and it's because it is a family. But um, anyway, without really, you know, shit getting into it. So um, to protect them. But um, I mean, it was just it was just really captive, captive, living a captivated life, like really captivity life, really bondage. So that's out of that. Um, oh, thank you, Aika. It's out of that that now, like any type of bondage, really fear. But any type of bondage, because I knew I know what bondage is. I knew what that was. I really, I'm not okay with that. If I pick that up in people or whatever, I really pray for them. Because I just, I just want people to be free. I don't want people to have to be in fear of anything. So this may not be your fear. So what is your fear? You know, what is your fear? What is your fear? Do you have a fear? You know, what is it? Is it fear of failure? Failure, uh, I mean, fear of um, getting a divorce. Is it fear of not making friends? Like, what is the fear? Is, is it fear of being rejected, of being abandoned? Like, what is your fear? Most of us have some underlying fear, and the devil is really good at disguising things because sometimes it's been so long in our life that we don't even identify it that way, but that's really what it is. So if you have that, he's controlling you. He's controlling you in that area. And trust me, that area is going to affect another area and another area because fear is not just contained. It's really affecting other things, but the devil don't even want you to know that. I lived so long without even knowing that I was in bondage to fear. Oh, hey, Tessa, how you doing, sis? Glad you could make it. Um, that, and thank you. You're the only one on my Instagram <laughs> that liked my thing today because I haven't been on there so long to post my regular stuff, but I appreciate you, sis. So I'm just saying, you know, um, so anyway, my topic today is called fear not, you know, appropriately, but that's the, that's the one the Lord gave me for the first one. It was just, I just heard fear not to fear not. And I just want to read a couple of things about that. It says you are called to fear not. Okay. So you are called your commission and you are called. 
Just like you are called to uh, do some an assignment God has called you to do, um, you are called, you are appointed to have a fear. For, you have been appointed and anointed to, to be fear-free, to live a fear-free life. When you are led by the spirit of fear, you cannot be led by the Holy Spirit, okay? You can't, can't do both. You can't do both. So when you're led by fear, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit, okay? Fear is not your mandate. Okay, guys, fear is a prison. It's a prison. Whatever you have fear in, that area of your life, you're pr imprisoned in that area. And every area uh, uh, connects to the other area and affects the other area. Okay? So fear is not your mandate. Actually, it's not even an option. Fear is not an option. Okay? It's not an option. It's not, not only is it not a mandate, it's not an option. Okay? It's not an option. Freedom. Freedom is your destiny. Freedom. Okay, not fear, freedom. Freedom is your destiny. Okay, so um, the Lord to showed me that one thing he showed me. Yes, fear is not your portion. Freedom is. So anyone that follows me on here, if God has really led them to follow me, that's where you go into freedom. In whatever area that you've been captive by fear, you've been in bondage, you've been possessed really by um, a mindset or uh, some emotional pull that is feeding fear, that has to be cut off. You have to locate what mindset is giving fear to life, what, what, what thinking process is giving, fear, is giving life to fear, excuse me, what thinking process is giving life to fear. You have to identify what is feeding fear or what is even the root of the fear. You have to identify that so that you could cut it off. Okay, you have to identify it so that you could cut it off. And um, the Lord showed me that fear is the devil's cauldron. Okay, fear is the devil's cauldron. That's uh, C-A-U-L-D-R-O-N. Because it's a spirit of control. It's a spirit of control. Okay, and a cauldron, I don't know if it's like, uh, physically it's like a big pot. Right? On a fire, on an open fire, you usually see it like in Harry Potter. I don't watch that or anything, but like those witchcraft movies, you see that. There's a reason. There's an attachment to the dark side with that stuff. And cauldron is kind of like characterized by something very, uh, yeah, yes, yes. But it's, it's the same kind of spirit. That's what it is. It's a control. It's a manipulation. And it really drives your emotion. And it's just designed to rob you of whatever. You cannot give place to the devil through fear, guys. That's one way you give place to the devil is through fear. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, uh, Tessa and Kasika, exactly. You cannot, you cannot, guys, you just cannot. So fear put a very strong emotional pull on you where, where you kind of follow that fear. It dominates. It's a dominating force. It's a dominating force. But you have to take your freedom back. You have to take your freedom back through the blood. The blood of Jesus bought your freedom. The spirit of fear was already defeated on the cross, guys. It's defeated on the cross. So why, why, why just let it linger and why let it take control and why let it uh, destroy and rob you? Because through fear, through fear, the devil do kill, steal, and destroy. And you do give place to him through fear. And fear is in the, the realm of darkness, not light. Exactly, you don't pick that cross back up. That's right, Aika. So your fear was already buried, nailed to the cross, guys. You just have to learn how to walk it out. It was buried. Now, one story God showed me, you know, that we talk a lot about is the, the, um, the story of Job, you know. And Job, I believe, a lot of time has been taught from a religious perspective, which so many things have been taught from religion, not revelation. Thou shalt not fear. Yeah, not revelation knowledge at all, but just carnality and religiosity. And it gives a false impression, impression about God. But the scripture says in Job 3.25 that the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. The thing I greatly feared and the thing I dreaded has come upon me. That's what it says. That's what it says. Job gave the devil access through fear. He said the thing I greatly feared. Job 3.25. Read it, guys. 
if you're you know if, if you're not uh, familiar with that specific uh, scripture yes you only fear the Lord that's right and that's a different type of fear where you respect where you you know respect and reverence God but um the the job gave access and that's what fear does it gives the devil access it gives him access to just like tentacles to just hang on and pull at you when he's ready. Maybe God gave you a business idea or gave you an idea, a vision to write a book. And because of fear, you don't even do it. Maybe he told you to go back to school. And, and then the devil just rear his head when God, when a God idea come or God tell you something to do, then the devil just rear his head through fear, through fear and destroy that. He comes up when it's convenient. You know, he'll stay kind of quiet like he's not there, but fear is there. But when a situation come up, especially when God is leading you, then the fear comes and stop you. So that's where you, you're really robbed. You know, your destiny is really robbed or, or you know, you fulfilling what God called you to, to be and you being your best. That's how it's robbed, guys. So, you know... Fear is the enemy. Fear is the enemy. Fear really is the enemy. Even with fear, you can't even see opportunities with fear. You know, you can't even see. A God may bring, you may be asking God, praying, Lord, bless me. Bless me with finance or bless me or whatever. And because of fear, an opportunity come, but because you can't even think like that, because that, that, that way of thinking will make you afraid, you, you won't even see it as an opportunity. You won't even see it as an opportunity. Maybe, for instance, um, you know, us coming on this broadcast is an opportunity. But say somebody is afraid of going in front of the camera. They might just totally reject this opportunity. Although God is telling them, they just totally reject it. They don't even think to do it because of what? They're afraid of going in front of the camera. If I didn't overcome my fears, a lot of stuff I wouldn't even be doing. I'm, I'm like, my normal way is I'm in the background. I'm not in forefront. That's my normal way. And I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I could even help you, give you ideas. And I'm comfortable if you get the credit as long as people are impacted. I'm like, yes, yes, guys. So I'm in the background. So if I went, if I wasn't delivered from fear, like stuff like this, which is so simple to somebody else, I wouldn't even be doing it. I wouldn't even be doing it, you know, and I thank God I have no fear doing it. And that is God. I'm telling you, God will deliver you. It's a process, but God really will deliver you. I'm trying to check my time because I came on a little, I think like two, a little late, like three or four. So I'm trying to check my time. So, um, yes, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, you know, I'm telling you, half the things I'm doing, which may be very easy for somebody else, in my normal way when I was in fear, I would not be doing it. Uh, thank you, Christine. <laughs> I would not be doing it. So I'm just telling you, this would have been robbing my destiny because I am supposed to be doing this. Like you guys are doing the broadcasting and different things. I We are supposed to be doing it. But what if we were like hung up on the fear and not, not let God deliver us? Then we wouldn't. Then we wouldn't. Oh, thank you, Kasika. Thank you, Kasika. You're great. You're great too, Han. So don't don't underestimate what you're doing. So um at all. But thank you, sis. Thank you for the love. But I'm just saying, like, uh, you don't want to miss your opportunities because of fear at all. You know, because it it's a robber. Fear really is a robber. There's like so much to say. There's just so much to say. You know, so cut cut whatever is given fear life. In your life, whether it's a mindset, whether it's a hurt that you had that you're not healed from, that you need to be healed from, whatever it is, you know, like get to the root of fear and let God really uh, deliver you, you know, let because it's a shackle, put shackles on us. Oh, sorry about that, um, Linda. Probably it's just better to watch the replay, hon. Sometimes I have to do that because I just can't even hear what the people are saying. And I'm back and forth. So I just end up watching the replay. So, sis, you probably just have to do that. But thank you for your support and coming in. Miss Linda Lee. <laughs> I like your name, Linda. Yeah, so, um, so yes, guys. Um, I think my time is coming. So, uh, yes, yes. So... 
there's so much to say. Uh, I don't have time. Okay. So, um, one thing I want to leave you guys with uh, is um, Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. Guys, don't cozy up to fear. Just don't identify. If you have a fear, just identify it and really let God help you. Don't, don't, don't pet your fear. The only thing fear is an enemy. It's not a portion in your life. Don't make fear a portion. Freedom is your portion. Freedom is your portion. Fear is prison. Fear is control. Fear is manipulation. That works against you, but works for the enemy to rob you. To rob you. So, you know, don't cozy up to fear. It's a demon, guys. So don't go in bed with it. Don't accept it. Go through the process of deliverance. Go through the, it's not easy. Like my deliverance was not easy. A lot of times, because what God does, he puts you in situations that you're afraid. But when you, when you, when you, when you, uh, let the Holy Spirit lead you with that, then you end up getting stronger on the other side. You don't feel it while you're going through it, but I'm telling you on the other side, you get stronger and you get stronger and you get stronger. You know, you get stronger. So Isaiah 41, 10 says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, so that's the scripture I really felt to leave with you guys is to fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with your righteous with my righteous right hand. And the scripture also says in Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. So don't. Uh, let the enemy train you, continue to train you and operate in, in fear, but let God deprogram you because when you stop, when you, when you, when you pull off of the fear, you pick up faith because fear is twisted faith. Fear is believing in the wrong thing. You know, fear is, but yes, uh, Kasika, love, power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is really believing in the wrong thing, believing in what the devil wants you to believe in, but faith is believing the word of God. So it's still belief. But your belief is focused on the wrong thing. And it will work just like the faith. It will work. It will, it, it will eventually manifest. It will eventually manifest. If you're operating in fear consistently, it will eventually manifest whatever that is you're fearing. So, um, you know, just let God train you to walk in faith in that area and pull you out of, out of the fear in that area. By when he leads you to do something that is fearful... Do it, guys. You know, lean on his strength, but do it. That's how you're going to overcome it. You cannot overcome it without just, um, you know, pray it away. Just praying alone, no, you're going to have to take some action steps. Like whatever steps the devil, the, um, excuse me, whatever steps the Lord tell you to take, yes, just do it. And do it feeling afraid if, if, if that's where you're at, but do it. Whatever steps like the Holy Spirit prompt you to take, that's what you need to take at that time. I'm telling you, when you keep taking those steps, baby steps, you're getting stronger and you're, you're getting freer and freer and freer and detaching yourself from it. So, um, so anyway, guys, um, yeah, take action steps, especially what the Holy Spirit leads you. I know for me, he led me to take a lot of specific things that I know the Lord was leading me to do. And those things, as I did it, I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel courage. I didn't feel like I was getting stronger, but I really was because the next time something similar came up that the Lord led me, then I'm like, oh, wow. It's, it didn't have such a, that strong fear like it did the first time, you know? So you're growing, you're growing. Every time you're coming out of that comfort zone, you're growing. So anyway, guys, I'm going to have to get going. I think now I have maybe like a minute or so. So thank you guys for coming in. Please join World Changer Sister Tribe. Um, that's bit.ly uh, forward slash join sister tribe now. Um, it's an awesome organization. Uh, there are many women that are really tearing the veil. If you feel a, uh, if you want to connect with a place where you can just um, be free, um, it's a safe haven. You know, it's a safe haven. It's a, for people that are broken or going through things and need some support through their challenges or whatever. It's awesome. There's a lot of love. Um, we're learning a lot. 
you know, and it's just an awesome environment, you know, for business, for career, for life. Like you will learn a lot of things that will help you overall in those areas. Oh, hi, uh, Neka. Glad to see you, hon. Hello. Yeah, I'm coming off now. So you could watch the replay, uh, Neka, you know, when you get time. I know you're busy too. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for posting. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Kasika. Thank you, uh, um, Linda. I know she, she kept going in and out with the connection. Um, thank you, Tessa, and whoever else I can't see. You never could see everybody from this angle. Oh, thank you, Aika. Thank you. Thank you, Aika. You've been posting a lot. So just thank everyone and um, hope this blessed you. At least I just don't want you to stay comfortable with your fear. If nothing else, I don't want you to be comfortable with your fear. I want you to have a fire to really be like, you know what? I got to work in this area. I got to overcome this. I got to get this right. If nothing else, thank you, Christine. If nothing else, that, okay? I don't want people to be comfortable and take on the world's idea about you know, their fear, a little bit of fear is good or control your fear. Get rid of your fear by the blood of Jesus and the word of God, guys. So love you guys again. Thank you everyone for coming in and I'll see you next week, hopefully. So, um, I don't know if the same people can join, you know, we all have different schedule, but thank you guys for today and you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for coming in. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye NECA. Love you. <laughs>